Hello everyone and welcome to this AND session. It's great to have your company and this evening we've got a fantastic guest in Danny Dignan and we'll get we'll get started chatting with him shortly but first I just want to give an introduction to the work that we do here at AND. AND is a coalition and we are made up of Neurobox, Succeed with Dyslexia, the Adult Dyslexia Centre, Hampshire Dyslexia Association, Yorkshire Rose Dyslexia Association and Helen Arkell Dyslexia Charity. And we know, don't we, that we're always stronger when we join together. We wanted to create a safe space for our adult community and AND is the adult network around neurodiversity and dyslexia. But before we get started, I just want to say a quick hello to some of our coalition members. So obviously, as you see here, I've got the Succeed with Dyslexia t-shirt on. I am an SWD ambassador and I'm also part of the Neurobox family as well. But Sue Floor, hi, you're the manager hi. at the Adult Dyslexia Centre, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. We've been going for now more than 20 years. I expect the other Sue will say she's been going longer. She always tries to win. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're there primarily to support adults. Um, we, we, we do training, um, assessments and support groups, uh, both online and face to face. Um, but we also have a, a lot of children coming to us. So, yeah, we're there for everybody. Yeah. Thank um, you, Sue. And, and thank you to you and the team for all the great work that you do. Um, Sue McKenna, you are the chair of Hampshire Dyslexia Association, aren't you? Tell us a little bit about the work you guys do. Thank you, Donna. And uh, it's lovely to see everybody. We are Hampshire Dyslexia Association, but we cover Southampton, Portsmouth and the Isle of Wight. We operate as a signposting centre mm. Um, we have support for employers, adults, children, teachers, professionals, adults, and currently we're working with a really fantastic charity based in Portsmouth to improve literacy. But we are very happy to be here this evening with the adult um, neurodiverse group, and we look forward to hearing from you, Danny. Yes, can't wait. Thank you, Sue. And again, thank you for all the work you do in your part of the world as well. It's much appreciated. Now, we have Pat Payne on the line. She is the chair of the Yorkshire Rose Dyslexia Association. And I'm hoping her text not too glitchy. Pat, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Pat, right. can you tell us a little bit about the work you guys do in Yorkshire? Oh, what do we do in Yorkshire? Uh, <laughs> Our main, absolutely our main uh, focus is the helpline. Yeah. The, the helpline is extremely busy, um, so much so that we've almost doubled our membership in the last sort of four years, wow. mainly through the helpline. Um, so that's what we really do, and we try to answer any sort of query questions. If we can't, we'll signpost people onto the next place, yeah. and that's takes an awful lot of our time to be honest with you yeah and then my second thing is that I personally uh facilitate uh English type on a Saturday morning with youngsters teaching them to touch type Brilliant. which is it's absolutely mind-blowingly good yeah when you see a nine-year-old who can type without looking at the screen without looking at fingers just only looking at the screen it's amazing and and that's it. We, we we try. Unfortunately, we are Yorkshire and we try to cover the whole of Yorkshire, but it's very, very difficult with few people because, as you know, it's such a huge area. I don't know how Sue manages to cover all the other areas she does because we can't we just can't reach everybody that we'd like to. We're wondering whether we could start up hubs in other cities um, around us, but that's <laughs> some, it's in the drawing board. Brilliant. Well, it's great to hear you thinking about reaching out across the county there, Pat. But thank you again for all what you do. You talked about the touch typing course being mind blowing. What you guys do in Yorkshire is mind blowing as well. Please keep on keeping on because I know that we need you there serving the community in that way. OK, so um, I'm going to share at the end of this conversation the contact details for our groups. 
uh, including Succeed, Nora Box and Helen Arkell as well. But as we know, this session is mostly about talking to a guest or an expert. And this evening, wow, what a guest that we've got, everybody. I'm really delighted to share Danny Diggan uh, and his voice with you guys this evening. Danny, I'm going to give you an introduction and then we'll get chatting. We talk a lot these days, everyone, about the lived experience, don't we? And that's what Danny's going to talk to us about this evening, his lived experience with dyslexia. And he's such a wise person. I've been lucky enough to know him for quite some time now. Now, Danny is a retired health and safety practitioner from Greater Manchester Fire Service. Um, but now in retirement, Danny, I know that you're really eager because of all your experiences to look to new adventures, to serve the communities, to raise awareness and so on. And that's why you kindly said that you didn't mind chatting with us tonight to share your story around dyslexia. So with that in mind, Danny, can you start us off and tell us a bit about your journey, your story around dyslexia? <coughs> Yeah, I can. First, obviously, uh, it's an honour and, and a pleasure, really, to be doing this. Although a little bit nervous, as, you, as, as most <laughs> dyslexic people are when they stood up in front of people, brings back memories of childhood and stood in front of the teacher and the, and the other children in the class. Not saying you're children, by the way, guys, but but you know what I'm saying. Or so that I'm a strict teacher, Danny. Please don't put me <laughs> in that category. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it, no, it's it's you know, it's all it's all part of the journey, really, which I'm going to talk about tonight. And I think, you know, it'd be wrong of me really not to go back to you know my, my early childhood, really, uh, in the sense that that's where my development, if you like, and my struggles with dyslexia have 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 come from. Uh, you know, I can remember bits and pieces of my primary school uh from infants and it was it was always really enjoyable and, and you know up to a certain age where you know the bits where you, you'd be making things out of plasticine and you'd be you know playing in the sand pits and you know doing all kinds of stuff that you used to do as a kid and you found really enjoyable but then it got to a point in my primary school probably around the old junior three, junior four, the one that the years before you leave and go to secondary school. Uh, that's when I really noticed my differences, I feel like, because bear in mind, that, you know, I'm at the age where dyslexia wasn't really, and I suppose neurodivergent, uh, the neurodiverse conditions, you know, uh, uh, in the main were not something that was sort of considered. You were either you were either good at your class or good at learning, or you weren't good at learning, you know. So I think, uh, again, I can remember being in class and, and other other um, other kids seemed to be able to do things that I couldn't when they were writing down lots of information in their school books. And, and I was like sort of watching out the window and watching what people were doing and paying really no attention to uh, to what I should have been doing but unbeknown to me it was part and parcel of my my, my dyslexic uh, traits if you like so yeah so leaving leaving sort of secondary school primary school I beg your pardon and then moving on to secondary school that's when I noticed an even bigger void between what I couldn't do and everybody else could do so and I'm just barely, just like just so you're aware that I'm using me me mind mapping software just as me, oh, yes, me pointers. Exactly. So if you see me looking yeah. to one side, that's that's what it yeah. is. Um, it's really useful yeah. that kind of technology, isn't it? It's yeah, really definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd certainly be lost without it, to be honest yeah. with you. And I think really it's it's as also it's an emotive sort of uh, subject, really, isn't it? Because it's about my personal life, and I feel like I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to study for things about my own personal life. I should know it because it's about me, isn't it? But, yeah, but you, it but helps, you, I mean, Danny, I think, to have it there as a tool, especially because it, it is personal, because it can help yeah. you, you know, yeah. to kind of structure your thoughts in that way, isn't it? it? That's exactly right. And the, mem the memory recall has always been, a, a, has been a, a, you know, a significant sort of issue with myself. Not that I didn't know the information, it's been able to recall the information. Yes. And I think stuff like, my mapping software, which I'll probably talk a little bit about uh, as, as we sort of progress uh, into my life's journey as, as, as such. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, I did I did sort of feel like the, the, the thick kid in the class, if you like, when I was at primary school, 
but it wasn't overly obvious. It was when I went to secondary school, like I say. Um, yeah, so I knew there was something different about me. Uh, and I seemed to really, really struggle with things that, like I say, other kids in the class didn't, didn't seem to struggle with. So again, I'd be the one that was sort of looking out the window. I wasn't paying attention to the work I was doing and, and things like that. You know, and in, in, in eventually, um, you know, it started to get quite significant, if you like. I really struggled with comprehension. Uh, as part, aside from the, the the reading and the writing, comp comprehending things was 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 a, was a really uh, a real a real struggle for me. And I, you know, when I'd be writing stuff down in in a book, I'd, I'd really struggle with that. You know, everybody else was writing pages and pages of of information. I was maybe doing one paragraph, a couple of lines, or even a paragraph, and that was me burnt out. Then you know, I think one of the significant things I, I remember was. We had a teacher um, in our in secondary school, and I think it was round about, I think it was uh, year year five, so it was the fifth year, sorry, not year five, the fifth year of secondary school in the old, or I think it's year eleven now, isn't it, in 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 secondary school as they call it. Uh, I can remember everybody in the class. There was thirty five kids in the class, and we're all there, and and uh, and. It got to my turn and the teacher says, you boys stand up. And he says, right, I to carry on reading. So I literally didn't have a clue what, what page it was on, what was meant to be reading. Even when I found the page, I couldn't comprehend what it was I was, I was reading, you see. So next thing you know, he gets all of his board duster, launches it at me. I can still see, I had a black blazer on and I, I can still see the chalk bouncing off me, off me blazer. And he screams at me in his loudest voice, you know, you boy, get out of my class and don't come back sort of thing. You know, all the kids in the class laughing. And that was my first taste then of realising I was I was, I was, was definitely different to the, to the other kids. And I didn't understand why, but that was that. And that then, that then uh, if you like, manifested in, into a situation where I was sort of... Uh, constantly feeling anxiety and frustration i didn't really in fact the whole thought of going to school was an absolute nightmare for me and it literally got to a point where uh, i'm going to school in the morning i get my registration and then I'd, I'd literally walk out the door and every every dinner time i'd come back in have my, have my dinner have me have my lunch because we was on free school meals at the time you know as, as we were kids growing up and then, you know, I would do the same thing again. I'd get my registration uh, for the afternoon and I'd go out and, and nobody seemed to miss me. And that was, that was unbeknown to me. That was my coping strategy. You know, that's what I was doing. I didn't want to do it. I was, I was scared of doing it. But it was the only way I could get away from that situation, from, from you know, the, the being, being, being belittled and the feeling of anxiety and frustration. So that played a significant part on my my childhood, really, and and consequently, I left school with no quali formal qualifications, you know. So that was that was the start of it, really. Uh, and I, I even got to a situation where I was like, I can remember being laying in bed one night at home as, as a young kid, fifteen years old or whatever. And I'd be thinking to myself, why did God make me like this? You know, I went to a Catholic school. It was allegedly a, a, a religious school that we went to, but it didn't seem to reflect uh, some of the way they treated the kids. You know what I mean? But I, I used to think, so why did God make me this way? Why, why have I, why am I the only one with a defective brain? You know, and and again, that was that was quite significant. And unbeknown to me, I didn't realise it was a you know a, 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 a typical or a recognised condition that many people suffer with. But I just believe there was only me in the world that had it. You know, everybody else was perfect. Everybody else could do what, what it is they need to do. It was just just me that was was sort of really struggling. Uh, and the other thing I think as well is I was you know it's when you get to in the fifth year and you've got enough teachers who tell you you think you're stupid you'll never get a job you'll never amount to anything i went through all them things and and what amazes me is i'm saying this to you now and you know i hear so many people that i've spoke to since you know in, in, in my uh, in you know in, in my lifetime if you like who've gone through a similar sort of thing you know where they've been made to feel like 
absolute useless rubbish, you know, being belittled, makes her feel worthless at the end of the day. And I'm going back to a time where, you know, it's probably a lot different than what it is now. I'd like to think it's a lot different at schools now. Do you know what I mean? There's more encouragement, there's more understanding, there's more awareness, there's more, uh, you know, uh, sort of diagnosis, if you like, of the condition. But for me, it was pretty traumatic at the time. So again, I'm thinking to myself, where do I go from here? You know, I knew I, I, knew I weren't going to go to college because I, I didn't have any academic qualifications. I, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, well, I don't want to be working in a, you know, sweeping roads and things like that. Nothing that there's wrong, nothing there's anything wrong with road sweepers. But you know what I'm saying? I, I had, I had, I had my own aspirations of where I wanted to be in life and what I wanted to do. You know, I mean, me, me, you know, I, and I was always, I think I was, I always wanted to impress my dad as well. Do you know what I mean? And unfortunately for unfortunate for me, I had a brother. He was very well. He's a very academic. He's, he's a brilliant lad. So. You know, uh, and I always wanted to be, I always felt like I was sort of pushed to one side, you know what I mean? Um, rightly or wrongly, I don't know, but that's that, that's the things that happen when you're growing up and you've got all these emotions going through and all these struggles that you're going, going through life with. So anyway, I managed to get a, a job pretty much straight away from leaving school. Uh, it was you know, I was it was carpentry and joinery. I was it was using my hands. I felt like, well, that's what God must have uh, must have allowed me to do. You know what I mean? I'm not an academic, but I can I'm good at making things. So yeah, so from there, you know, I was doing things that potentially uh, I shouldn't have been doing myself in in the sense that I wasn't academically qualified to do. Yet I could still do it. But I wasn't doing it in accordance with how everybody else did it. I was pretty much finding my own ways of doing things to achieve That's the same terrible. outcome. That's so, terrible. so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just going to mute Pat because I think she's oh, sorry, been on mute second. by accident. So sorry to right. interrupt you there, Danny. No worries. No worries at all. I thought it was me then. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the glitches of teams. Please do carry on because honestly, what you're sharing. It's blown me away, Danny, and it's it's yeah. really really emotional as well. So please do carry on. Fantastic. Yeah. So you know, like I say, I I always felt like well, I must have found something here where I realised that there's 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 more ways to do something. That they're all saying there's more ways to more than one way to skin a cat, so to yeah. speak. But you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. You know, just because a book says you must do it in a certain way, and you must follow, you know you know not like the you know from from a to abc in a, in, a, in a sort of a logical sequential way that's how you achieve things but when I, I was doing things differently i was doing things purely by if you like looking at things and, and thinking right well if I, if I have to i was making manufactured joinery at the time so it was one of them where uh you know i'd have to look at and i'd, I'd, I'd foresee the problems that that would occur and as a result of that, I was, you know, I was, I was good at my job and I made a good living out of it. But then as, as time progressed and years progressed, I realised that I had a, I had a hunger for learning, which was, which is a bit ironic. And then I ended up doing my city and guilds and advanced crafting, carpentry and joinery at, at Salford College, as it was at the time. And then I, uh, I then later on decided I want to try and do something else, you know, and it was, I did it, and I went on to college and I did an ordinary national, ordinary national certificate in construction and property. Then I went on later to do my NEBOSH certificate for health and safety, occupational health and safety. Then I went on to do um, a, a high national certificate at Salford Uni in, in, in uh, construction and property. That was two years part time. And then, and then I went on to uh, a bachelor's, uh, bachelor's uh, sorry, a bachelor of science degree, a bachelor's with honours it was, with uh, in construction project management. But also prior to that, sorry, I missed out. I did a a, a, a national diploma in occupational safety and health, you know, which then got me to, on to become a, a chartered member of the institution, institution of occupational safety and health, which was a great achievement for me, you know. So it, it, well, in essence, what I'm trying to say is it, I spent an extra 13 years studying, you know, and, and, the, the biggest part of that, I did that without any kind of support. You know, it's purely based on me just trying my hardest to, to do things and, and trying to think think out the box and to try, uh, try and achieve what I need to achieve. And I did that to a certain extent. But it was when I went to Salford Uni University, to be fair to them, 
it was brilliant because I said, you know, I could do the course, no problem. I said, but I know when I did my my Nibosh uh, certificate, I struggled. I think I've, I think it was the second time I passed it, but I struggled. And I said, and they actually said to me, he said, Dan, we know you know your stuff, but I said, I know, I said, but I struggled to get down on paper. And I didn't realise it was dyslexic even. Then I had a feeling there was something along the lines of, a, you know, I, I just had a struggle with things. So anyway, at the time, I had a, they said to me, oh, we can give you the scribe and the menuensis. So I said, all oh, right, brilliant. What does that mean? So I said, well, you sit down, they'll read the questions to you, and then you you read, you read give them the answer and they'll write it down for you. So I said, all oh, right, brilliant. I said, I'll have a go at that. And anyway, the first experience was, if I can say it was horrendous, is, 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 is you know, it's not an under, understatement because, or it's not understated, sorry, because it, it, the person that was doing it wasn't an, wasn't an, an amanuensis and he was doing it as a, you know, because he was asked to do it and he, he was trotting all the way through it. So every time I said, I'm oh, sorry, can you put a line through that? I was getting lots of tuts. So people think it's, you know, it's, you know, somebody else is doing it, it must be easy. Well, it's not. In that itself created a lot of problems, but I got through it and I passed it and, and again, when I went to when I went to Salford Uni, uh, I mentioned this to them, and they said, "Oh, do you think you might be dyslexic?" I said, "Well, I'm not sure, but possibly." I said, "There's any way you can find out." So I had the assessment done. I had the initial um, dyslexia, uh, what, what do you call it? Sorry, Donna, you know the uh, the screening. I had the screening. Yeah. I had the screening done first, and then it, obviously that then pointed to the fact that I am I have got dyslexic characteristics. Then I, then luckily they paid for a full assessment. So from the full assessment, I was then uh, I was then uh, provided with a report and it, it identified my strengths and weaknesses and what have you and and the recommendations for the support plan and, and that was all brilliant. And then I ended up getting all the assistive technologies and and that that in itself was what was sort of a wow. You know what I mean? It was it was uh, it was like a breath of fresh air for me because then I realised that all these things that I just thought I was I was sort of thick or stupid doing um, or struggling with then it all it all all sort of made sense if you like yeah you know so uh yeah so that was that was pretty much I'm just going to see what I put on here uh, uh, what a journey Danny I mean I think yeah. that journey will resonate unfortunately with a lot of people yes yeah. I say unfortunately because it's it's really really tough journey you've been on there but managed yeah. to come through and dig in to find the resilience yeah. whilst you're having a look at your notes is there anything else you wanted to share while we're on this bit because i wanted to ask you the next question is about you talk about support and you, you've shared tonight that you're looking at a mind map what support's been useful for you along the way to get you to where you are you know you, you've been a very consummate professional I know you're retired now but you're still very active what's yeah. been some of the biggest supports that you've had that's really made a difference for you I th I think uh I'll be honest with you I think the uh the the realization of of uh for example mind maps mind mapping software I use one called I'm not you know I'm not promoting them, but it's it's uh, mind genius 20 it's called and it's a project management software but also it's a mind map, it's a type of return software. And so it's great for brainstorming, you, you know, any kind of project you're working on, you put your thoughts down on the screen and then you can manipulate it and put it into order and all kinds of stuff. And I think, and I use that for pretty much uh, for, for, for lots of things really, not just for the work setting, do you know what I mean? And I know they do, they do a, uh, the, the, the same same company does one for education as well, so studying and what have you. But I know there's loads of other, other, other organizations out there or software manufacturers or suppliers who who provide similar sort of software, but that's what I stuck with, if you like. Yeah. And and I think as well, what what I also like to use is is uh, and if if you you know there are a text to speech uh, software that's out there, but I know Mac, I cannot well I'm allowed to use that was mentioned like Microsoft three six five with yeah. with the, with the immersive reader. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 a brilliant bit of kit, and it's built yeah. into the software. And and you, uh, one of the things that I've re sort of realised is you, you don't have to just be sort of dyslexic or or you know stole the what's the name. If if you it's it's a it's a it's a good bit of software that can be used for everybody really. Do you know what I mean? To make yourself more efficient, more productive, and what have you. 
so yeah so that, that that's 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 been a that's been that's been a godsend really um you know one of the things that i that i sort of realized when, when i was given the uh the assistive technologies that's when I was at when I was at university was you don't always know what is going to work for you yes. and you get yeah. you get given this equipment and the equipment itself is brilliant and it's you know going back a few years now it was quite expensive as well you know but it it doesn't cure the problem if you know what I'm saying you know if it doesn't it doesn't make it doesn't say right well, you got this piece of kit now then all your problems are going to go away you know, you've got to be able to use use the uh, the technology that's available, and some suit some people, and some some doesn't, some won't suit people. Do you know what I mean? But I I'd always say, well, at least give it a try. Yes. You know what I mean? And if because a lot of times we've got these inbuilt barriers in our own minds, particularly where if we're dyslexic or neurodiverse, but we believe that things won't work, or that's not going to work for me. When I I'm sort of of the belief now that you should just try it and give it a good try. You know, and I think once you know what works for you, uh, what it'll open doors for you. You know what I mean? And 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 I think uh, things like I say, my mapping, uh, text to speech. You know, the stuff that I've struggled with. Uh, it. You know, I'm not saying that all the struggles go away, but they certainly help to overcome them. And in fact, I, I, you know, I'm not just saying it, well, I left, I left uni with a 2-1 and I thought that was pretty yeah, decent. That's, that's for, for somebody who struggled with comprehending. That's brilliant. One of the, one of the key things, and I, my, apologies if it's one of your future questions, but one of the things I, I, I've realised is that, uh, you know, there's, there's always, there's always, uh, you can always benefit from, from, if you like struggling with things, if you struggle with something and 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 you find that you can overcome something, then that's that's you know it's, it, it, that in itself is a great achievement. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it makes perfect sense. And I, I was going to ask about your insights into your journey because we learn so much from listening to each other. Is yeah. that one of your insights? Because you talked about the fifteen-year-old you. Yeah. Now at your stage of life and you're thinking back to all these different chapters that you've been through. Yeah. Is that, is, uh, how can I put it? Is the, uh, are you thinking now those struggles of kind of as awful as they were at the time have made you who you are now really? 100%. The strong person, the wise person. Yes, def us? definitely. I don't, I don't believe I'm, I've been, I'll be in this position now where I, I've got a passion for supporting other people and the empathy side of things uh, without I've gone, without actually having to, having to have gone through them struggles. Do you know what I mean? So, and, I, and one of the things that I'm really, you know, I tell myself all the time, if I can just help somebody to, uh, to not have to go through the struggles that I went through. Do you know what I mean? Uh, particularly when we when we realise that whenever you speak to somebody uh, with, with who's, who's had a real difficult time with with, uh, with with like dyslexia or neurodiversity, if you like, or their traits, I should say, you know, we used and we'd always we sort of always use the negative side of things as opposed to the positive side of things. You know what I mean? But I think I I I want to I want to try and help other people so they don't have to go through what I went through, and to help them realise that. You know, being dyslexic isn't a, isn't, a, and we always what is it is it a disability? Is it not a disability? Do you know what I mean? But it doesn't have to be something that that prevents you from achieving in life. If anything, you know, it could be the it could be the thing that actually makes you want to it makes you achieve in life. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it's uh, and that's what drives me. I think, uh, and you know, we can always. We can always think life's tough and, and, and you know, we're not going to get anywhere and everything stacks against me. But it, believe me, it's not. You know what I mean? It, I mean, I, I wouldn't have said to, I wouldn't be talking like this if I was 30 years younger, because I'll be of the, I'll be of the mindset where I'm just I'm doomed to failure because everybody told me I'm doomed to failure. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you think and, and, the messages that you want to 
as we draw our conversation to a close, Danny, are these yeah. part of the messages that you want to share with folks who are listening to this, 100%. who maybe, you know, at this point are in the middle of those struggles? Yeah, 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 100%. You know, it's one of them. Uh, it's, it, it, it really, just one second. No uh, problem. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think, I think really, you know, it, it, it's about showing the empathy side of things and not just showing empathy, but showing that you've come from where they, where, where they are or where they're going to go to. Do you know what I mean? And I think, I think that's the key thing for me. If, if, if people can see that you've struggled, but you've, you've, you've achieved in life, if you like, and I don't mean everybody's got their own their own sort of definition of what's achieving and what's not achieving, but you know what I'm saying is, I think I feel like I've 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 got the uh, I've got the passion, I've got the understanding, I've got the empathy, and really all I want to do is pass on that knowledge and experience, whether it's good or bad. You know, my bad experience will hopefully prevent them from having a bad experience. You know what I'm saying? So. And that's that's the key thing. And I think everybody who works in 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 this this sort of field, you, people like yourself, who, who make make a massive difference to people like me, you know. Uh, without without that, you know, without that sort of community of of supportiveness, if you like, uh, you just have people, you know, feeling miserable and and and, and you know and, and giving up, if you like. But because of people like yourselves and and the works that you do and. And you know, helping people like me and and, and others, you know, it, it, it's it's it, it's to me, it's it's uh, it's 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 difficult to really it's difficult to really for me to put into words. Other than we'd be lost without it. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's the community, it's, the community it's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think nothing worse than feeling like you. I always think back to when I was that kid on my own, thinking why 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 is it only me like this? And it's not only me like this, and it's people like yourselves and the work that you do that highlight the fact that, you know, you're not on your own. And it's not something that's going to define your life forever in a day. In fact, if anything, it, it's the thing that's going to help you to succeed in life. I mean, obviously, that's why you've got to succeed with dyslexia. And that wasn't meant to be a fun on there, you know, just, <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying. That, but, that, but that's what it's about, really, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, and, it's, and it's, it's, to me, it's, it's fantastic. It's brilliant. Well, Danny, you're pretty fantastic as well. Thank you so much because it's so brave to speak of yourself in this way. You're so honest. Um, and that honesty is is a is like a beacon because what it does is it shines a light on all the things that maybe we're still scared to speak about or people who yeah. aren't there yet on their journey. I, I honestly can't thank you enough. I I've known you for quite some time and it's it's been a real pleasure. So I was delighted when you said that you were going to speak with us this evening. Um, thank you I've, I've just, for your honesty. Yes, please do share anything. I've just got one, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the, one of the questions uh, I think we was going to discuss really was, was uh, what sort of message would I like to give to other yes, neurodivergent people? Yeah. And one of the key things that I was thinking about it is, is never be afraid to make a fool of yourself. Or perceived fool yourself because I went through, I went through life and you thinking I better keep my mouth shut I better not say anything I better not put my head above the parapet because people are going to think I'm daft think I'm stupid think I'm thick think I'm you know uh, whatever uh, but I believe I truly believe that we should all face our demons and this is one of my demons talking in front of people it's not something we enjoy doing as dyslexic because we we were so used to sitting at the back of the class. Please don't look at me. If I, I, you know, I can't. I can't see that. I can't see. One of the strategies, if you like, was, oh, I can't read the. Uh, I can't read the, the the board, if you like, because I haven't got my glasses. Even though, even though I didn't wear any glasses, mm -hmm. because you because you always have these strategies yeah. that, that that you develop to, to sort of take you away from that fear of being ridiculed or or being asked questions or you know what I mean to make you stand out in the class. But I think you get to a point is where. It's always better to to make yourself stand out, to put your head above the parapet, to to sort of, you know, uh, one of the one of the, the buzzes I always get is 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 delivering dyslexia in aware dyslexia in the workplace uh, awareness training, and even related to dyslexia and, and health and safety and, and communication and what have you. 
it's fantastic but because i know it's a struggle but the people that you that you're if you like talking to if you like they're getting something out of it do you know what i mean and they're getting something to take away that's really positive and i think once you can do that uh, and expose yourself a little bit it then becomes not as stressful not as daunting do you know what i mean and 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 it's things that you can build up over time you do a little bit here a little bit there and 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 then when you get really confident which you will do you know what i mean you might just be, you might just have to find your own way to be able to achieve achieve it like i say develop your own coping strategies and look at ways of uh you know projecting yourself to the best of your ability some people some people are very very extrovert in the way they deliver training and that's fantastic and that can be a dyslexic trait as well mm. you know what i mean and, it's, and and i think it's just finding out who you are but look at the strategy on the way but like i say never be never anybody's got a neurodiverse or neurodivergent condition or dyslexia what have you just just give it your best and go for it if you make a mistake you make a mistake you, you know for next time and you just keep learning and, and and all of a sudden you'll find yourself really enjoying and loving what it is you're trying to do you know what i mean brilliant wise words thank you so <laughs> much with that in mind then um i'm going to share the contact details as i said i would this is always the bit i get very nervous about because it's the technology but i'm hoping it's going to work because um i'm sure that what danny shared is very inspiring and it will resonate with a lot of you during this session and as i say we're so grateful to him for being so honest and open and i love some of his ideas about you know being yourself and not being scared to to make a mistake and so on um but if you are scared nervous want to find out more want some advice to get you to the place where you know that you need to be there's lots of organizations out there as danny says you are not on your own so this evening you've heard from Sue Floor, who's part of the Adult Dyslexia Centre, and they have a helpline. There's their phone number and email address. We've heard from Pat talking about all that great work they do over in Yorkshire. There's the helpline that Pat said they're always so busy because they've got big community to serve. We've got the email address as well there. We've got Hampshire's helpline email address. We heard from Sue McKenna this evening. You see me in my Succeed with Dyslexia t-shirt. I'm an ambassador for Succeed. We don't have a help plan. That's not the work that we do there. But what we do is raise awareness and break down some of those barriers that Danny was talking about this evening. So please do reach out to the team there if you want to find out more. There's their email address. As I said a little earlier, I'm also lucky enough to be part of the Norabox family. Here's Norabox's website and their email address. They deliver training, they deliver assessments and support around technology mm. as well. And then we've got Helen Arkell Dyslexia Charity contact details as well. They do lots of great work. And so please do reach out to those guys as well. Now, I'm hoping that you might be able to see the screen because I've just had a message from Sue saying that you guys can't see this slide. Let me have a go at resharing it. This is why I don't like the technology sometimes, <laughs> guys. It makes me nervous. So let me have another go at resharing. I've talked it through, so I don't need to do that again. But let me see if we can share it again. Please work this time. Can you guys see that OK? No. Oh, dear. What's occurring here? Um. I'm not sure what's happening, guys, but never mind. We won't delay the, the session. What we will do, though, is we'll share it when it gets shared on YouTube. Um, and so don't worry about that. We've ha you will see it in other sessions that we've delivered. It's the contact details for ADC, Yorkshire Rose and so on. Um, but thank you so much for your time. As Danny and I have said, you're not on your own. Although you couldn't see the slide with the contact details, there are lots of helplines out there and we will add it to that to the YouTube video when we share it with um, all you wonderful listeners out there. So thank you so much for your time. Again, a huge thank you to you, Danny. Much appreciated. And yeah, let's thank keep you. talking about these really important issues. Until next time, everyone, thanks so much for your company. We look forward to, to welcoming you next time around on AND. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.